in the overall teachings of Jesus Christ, the topic of the family occupies a very tiny uh, part. And for the Jews, for the people from the Middle East, the family has a huge importance. The clan, the uh, family bonds, the blood relationship. When you go through the Old Testament, you find out how critical the family is because that was the only unit that was able to sustain you, help you in your old age, in some cases, uh, when you were assaulted by, um, let's say, unjust individuals. So it was critical. You needed your family. You were very much linked. Everything about your life was within a family. Think about people didn't travel like nowadays. Once you were born in, let's say, a village, so maybe you got to know those from the neighboring village, but that was let's say, the, um, as far as it can get. Now, this occasion, when Jesus' mother and his brothers, and as a matter of fact, these are the cousins, because in the Semitic language, you don't have separate words for like second cousins uh, or uh, other words describing, because it's brothers. They are so connected, brothers. And obviously, this word is used in the brothers, in the faith. This is how we receive it. So, when Jesus' mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the cousins arrive, that would be a perfect occasion for Jesus to speak about the importance, the value, the uh, magnitude of uh, what the family bonds are all about. And instead, we find an answer that probably blew the people's minds away once they heard that. Your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. The message was brought to Jesus. And he said to them in reply, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. He brings it to a completely different level. What actually draws my attention is that recently we have been listening to the parables that describe the kingdom of God and every parable would begin. The kingdom of God can be likened to, is like, not exactly what the parable speaks about, but it's a way of understanding the kingdom. But when it comes to this event here, he doesn't say, my mother and my brothers are sort of like those who, no. He actually goes straight and he says, those who hear the word of God and act on it. Which means, hearing God's word, meaning letting God speak to us. Because just to make a little bit parenthesis here, we're listening to a lot of words, but how many of those actually became a word of God for me? I could tell you that for most of the people, the scriptures they hear or read never became God, God's word talking to them. This was ancient text, nice stories, very um, helpful um, wisdom tips, but it remains on this level. It never became God who speaks to me. Because it's very easy if it is not really God's word, it's just human text that not much related to my life, I can easily abandon it and let it go. But if we hear what God says, and this hearing becomes acting in concrete aspect, because again, God's word is very rich, it needs to take root in our lives. From uh, taking root, as we find out, the seeds that fall on different soil, then gradually it sprouts up and slowly it's growing and bearing fruit. 
some a hundred, some a sixty, some a thirtyfold. Jesus said in his first parable on the sower, which basically speaks about what God can do once his word is rooted. How can we know about that? Once again, if you read the lives of different saints, holy men and women, then you find out how deeply God's word can be rooted, that it becomes in those people truly a powerful light that is enlightening many of those who are around. If, but that's an important word, if this word gets rooted. So, why Jesus Christ says that the word of God and bringing it in, listening to it is so critical and he doesn't speak any single word about the importance of um, the family in this context. So, Jesus' mother and the cousins. When I thought about it, having certain experience as a priest, I find out that family is very beautiful, but also family in many instances was a cause of the downfall of many people. I can tell you only this element. I've never seen the ferocious uh, anger and viciousness with which siblings are suing each other over the inheritance. So where are those good families? How come two sisters can drag each other to court over the inheritance? Hatefully, viciously, in order to destroy the other. Where are those bonds? Aren't we supposed to help each other? And we can multiply different stories. Which means the family is of value and importance, absolutely. But I know also people for whom the family was uh, actually a huge detriment and obstacle to embrace God's word, the teaching, also the vocation. I can come up with three names of young men for whom the parents were a real big obstacle uh, to embrace Jesus Christ and ultimately their vocation. They were agents of the devil, literally. That's why the Lord says, look, the family will not bring you to eternal life, ultimately. Don't think that the family will actually. The only one who can is Jesus himself. Do you remember St. Francis of Assisi? He had to uh, let himself be disowned by his father. And he let go. And he said, from this point on, after he stripped himself of the vestments that belonged to his uh, earthly father, he said, from this point on, I have one heavenly father. Padre Pio's parents were not that happy that he became a capuchin. St. Faustina's uh, uh, father did everything possible not to let her enter the convent. And we can go through the history of them. Which means... What is the real connection over here? Those who are connected by the spiritual bonds and help each other on the path of salvation. Not so long ago, I talked to a girl for whom his sisters were the cause of ruining her moral life, were example of diabolical addictions. So where are the family? Instead of helping her up, actually, they introduced her to drugs. Where is the good family? Instead, the Lord says, no. Those who truly make the word the center of their lives and act on it, that's your family. Because this will bring you up to heaven. This will allow you to experience and be open to the gift of God and welcome the Spirit of God in you. And I can tell you, I met already many people in my life for whom truly the family, as I said earlier, was a detriment and um, an impediment of meeting Christ. But also, I met those who, 
in faith created the bonds that helped them come out of toxic families. Not only that, I met people with whom after 10 or 15 minutes of a conversation, we bonded so well. There was a connection as if you have known someone for years. And there are also those whom I have known for years and there's no connection whatsoever. How mysterious it is that you meet a person and this is actually what the mystics, St. Faustina speaks about it as well, that the spirit actually joins you and you understand each other. There is no duplicity. There is uh, understanding of spiritual uh, values and other things. And there are those, and I have uh, clear memories of those. You met after first 15 seconds of the conversation, I knew inside there would never be a, co a connection. Yes, I would pray for that person. Yes, we would talk, but never a connection would take place. Why would that be statement? Because there was so different, we may say, um, objectives in life, ways of living, ways of existing. And therefore, the Lord says, embrace those who embrace the word for whom the word is important because those will bring you up to heaven. That's what's so critical so that we can, in our lives, bring about the nature of Christ by the working of the Holy Spirit and ultimately will become the, his brothers. Can you imagine that he can call us brothers and sisters? He can call us like this, but wait a minute. Are we truly his brothers and sisters? I'm not speaking by name because it's very easy to put a little uh, name tag saying my name is. No, but really, can he identify with us and say, look, you really are related to me by the way you take my father's word to your life. And at that stage, we need to ask, Lord, help me to welcome this word. Make your word become a life-changing experience that ultimately may create for me a new family, a family that is the family of the church.